get this party started. So it is seven o'clock, which means it's time to draw things at the Milwaukee Makerspace. Model stuff. Um, this is a good beginner friendly class. So if you are, are new to Fusion, welcome. Uh, and you know, we'll go ahead and, and get started. The project for the day is we are going to be uh, modeling one of these fine items. Uh, the key of a thousand truths. Behold, the key of a thousand truths. It is a little key that you use to open up a paper towel dispenser, uh, as requested by Mike, who is not present uh, in class today. But Mike has been coming to class so long that he can just tell me what to do, and I will be like, all right, cool. I, I'll, let's do that. That sounds great. Um, I'm, I'm happy to do do whatever suggestions people want. Um, and we need these here at Space because we're apparently we're low on them. Um, so, and it, and it is a fun and interesting project. So let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to start myself a new document, new design here, just by clicking on the plus button here up in the tabs area. And I'm going to, I guess I'm going to think about this, drawing this kind of like from the key side down. So that little zigzag is going to be a majority of our of our fun today. And I got my calipers here, so this is one of those classes where I'll, I'll be shouting out measurements. Um, and for those of you joining us at home, if I shout out a measurement and you didn't get it, feel free to uh, pipe up and be like, hey, what was that? Um, also, we're just drawing for fun, so if you just want to make up some measurements, I'm not going to judge you. All right. Cool. So, uh oh, did I not do that already? Uh, oh, uh, well, it should be. You might just have to pin me, because um, I don't. I don't do a present anymore. Uh, I just make a virtual camera. So, um, if you. If you're having trouble seeing me, if you hover over any of these things like I'm doing here, and I, I can just click on this little pin button. Uh, can I click on that little? And then it makes it the largest item. Oh, there you go. That makes sense? All right, cool. It's very blocky, though. It's not real sharp. Oh, interesting. Oh, what, how is OBS doing here? It looks like it's doing fine. <clears throat> All right, well, let's keep going. We'll see how we do. All right, so like I said, I'm going to think about this top down uh, from the zigzag side. So I'm going to start by making a rectangle. So I'll start by creating a sketch. So I'm going to go up to the Create menu, and I'm going to choose Create Sketch. And I'm going to pick the top plane to draw on. Um, so that's the plane in between my X and my Y axis. But it doesn't really matter which plane you choose. Um, until you start making something, everything is just kind of floating out in midair. So, um, and on uh, for this particular occasion, I think I'm going to choose a center point rectangle. So, in general, when I make my drawings, I like to have something that is connected to the origin to kind of like constrain my drawing in space. And to have something connected to the origin um, helps me do that. So I'm going to click to place the center point of my rectangle that I'm making right at the center of my drawing world here. I'm going to zoom in. And now I'm going to measure. Uh, so I happen to know that this is 1.08 inches wide. And... It is 0.315 inches wide, or tall, I guess. So that is our measurement for that first. Oh, 0.315. Yeah, 0.315 by 1.08. And that's that very outside rectangle of our of our piece here. 
Now, we kind of have a, a secondary rectangle, and, and that rectangle is the rectangle that constrains our zigzags. So I'm kind of like making a measurement, making another rectangle that will kind of be the guide for the constraint of our zigzags here. So this next rectangle we're going to make will be, again, a center rectangle. So I'm going to go ahead and click on Create Rectangle and then Center Rectangle. I'm going to place the center point right at the same place I placed the center point of the first rectangle we made. And this rectangle is going to be 0.21 in, I don't know, let's call that height. And then the width, I believe, is 1.0 four. Yes. 1.04. So it's a rectangle within the rectangle. And you know what? I'm going to remove this from the keychain. So that way I'm not messing up the audio for anybody here. All right, good. So here's our key. So we've got our kind of constraining rectangle drawn here. Something to note is all of these measurements, I can move them around. So if they're in a place, if they kind of pop into a place that it become difficult to read for whatever reason, I can click and drag and move them into a place so I can see them a little bit better. And I'm just going to kind of leave those up on the screen for a second here. How are you guys doing at home? Did, are my measurements coming through okay? Thumbs up, thumbs up, all right, cool. All right, so right now we have all solid lines here. And the second rectangle I made is more of like a guide than like geometry that I'm gonna do anything with. So you can see right now if I hover over these individual pieces, I can click and um, highlight the enclosed spaces, right? But because this is a, these lines here are just uh, lines that I've made as reference lines, let's say, I'm going to choose to turn these into construction lines. So we have solid lines right now, uh, but you can turn them into construction lines one of two ways. So I can click on the highlight the line, actually three ways. I can highlight the line in my sketch palette, I can come over to the line type option and I can highlight that construction option there. And that will turn it into a dashed line. And now you see that I can no longer just highlight that center area um, because those rectangles are not separate anymore. It's just one. And the, the, these lines don't constrain anything. Let's say that. Um, the other way you can turn something into a construction line is just hitting the X key on the keyboard. So if you're a fan of keyboard shortcuts, um, you could do that. Otherwise, like I said, you, there's a line type button that says construction in my sketch palette. And I just have to highlight that and click on it. And then now I have like just guidelines. They're not rules, they're guidelines. All right. So now I want to make one more set of lines and these set of lines is from experience drawing this the first time as prep before class uh, the next set of lines I'm gonna make just by making an offset so I'm gonna come down to this uh, modify menu and I'm going to choose this offset option. And I just need to offset my two, my top and my bottom of my guidelines there uh, by 0 0.025. And that needs to go 0 0.025 inwards, uh, in towards the center of our, of our item here. Um, for me, that means making it a negative number. However, 
for you it might not be that way. So positive and negative numbers um, I think are based in fusion in how you draw the sketch. So and maybe for a center rectangle it doesn't matter but uh, I, I've often seen people say oh I, I did negative and it went out or I did positive and went in. Um, so you just kinda kinda pay attention to those negative and positive numbers. Uh, I couldn't tell you how fusion makes that decision but just look at the direction it's moving that line and you can tell visually if it's moving the right way. 0 0.25. 0 0.025. So not a quarter of an inch, uh, even less than that. Uh, yeah, the top and the bottom. Yeah, so the top and our bottom, the lines that are construction lines, Regular That's totally fine. Yeah, you can. Uh, we will make them construction lines, um, but they they pop in initially as regular lines, and then you have to make them. In fact, you know, on mine, I'm gonna leave them as regular lines right now, because uh, it'll be easier to see the next step. We got a lot of dashed lines going on. Um, we can go at, at any time and and not make these construction lines too. It, it, that's important to note is if you've made something a construction line and you no longer want it to be that way you can turn it back into a solid line just using that same line type button over there. Alright so the next thing we're gonna do here is we're gonna make our little zigzags. Actually we have to note the the apexes of each one of these little um, V's or W's uh, depending on how you see things, we're going to note where that corner point is on each one of these. And we can do that because I'm assuming, and I, get, I could measure, kind of, that all these are evenly spaced. It would be weird if they weren't evenly spaced. And I'm going to say yes, these are all evenly, evenly spaced. And we've got one, two, three, four, five, six points down here. So I need to create a series of six lines that are all evenly spaced out. And there is a magical command that will do that for me. So in the Create menu, if we come down to the Rectangular Pattern option, the Rectangular pattern option is the when people say, hey, I want to cut and paste a thing. Uh, I would point people towards the rectangular pattern option before I say, hey, you, could, you should cut and paste that. You can copy things, um, but I think rectangular pattern is a much better option because it will give us a way to go and change our mind about things later. So I've got my rectangular pattern window that has popped up here. And if I choose the construction line as the ob at one side of my piece here, it doesn't really matter which side you choose. It, as my object, I've chosen that construction line. Uh, I'm going to pick a direction here, too. You don't necessarily need to pick a direction because in this case our model or our drawing is oriented in the XY direction but uh, if for say we wanted to make a pattern at a weird angle like this you, you could totally do that by choosing one of these other lines at a, as a direction uh, we don't want to do that so I'm just gonna pick that solid top line there as my direction and now as I move this arrow over I can see I've got a couple of lines that are appearing here. Now, I know the distance that I want to, uh, the extent that I want to make this pattern is going to be that 1.04. Um, and again, for me, for some reason, this is negative. But for you, it might be a positive number. And the amount of them, I believe, is going to be 8. So because it makes a line at the end here, 
um, then we don't need to count that. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Yes. So our distance is going to be 1.04. And for me, again, it's a negative number. For you, it might be a positive number. Just kind of look at the direction the pattern is going here. I'll point out a couple other things about this rectangular pattern option. So uh, we're making a pattern just in one direction. So it's really more like a linear pattern. Uh, but you could choose to make a pattern in, in more than one direction. So uh, I'm going to turn this quantity down to one so I'm not making stacking up lines on top of each other. But I could make a pattern in more than one direction, right? So I could choose to make this pattern rectangular like like the name implies but I'm not going to do that because in this case we don't need to so I'm just going to turn that quantity down to down to one so I'm only making I'm not making any copies in the uh, y direction I'm only making copies in the x direction the extent type or the distance type we have set to extent um, very rarely do, does this end up being the option that I choose to go with, but for this particular occasion it worked out really well. Um, normally I think spacing is an easier thing to think about, so the space you want between your pattern, um, but it just depends on what you're measuring and, and how, you're, how you're measuring it, I suppose. The last thing that I'll point out here is uh, we're making a pattern in one direction, but you could choose to make a pattern that is symmetric, and, and what that does is it, it makes the object that you chose like the center of your pattern, and then expands your grid out equally on either side. Uh, but again, for us, one direction is fine. You want these vertical ones to be construction lines, right? We, yep, we're going to make these into construction lines as well. In fact, that'll be our next step. In fact, for me, when I made a pattern of a construction line, it kept it as a construction line, um, so, which, is, which is handy. Uh, although it does fill up our drawing with lots of dashed lines and, and things become difficult to look at, but, uh, but it is what it is. So now... The next step we want to do here is to actually make our zigzags. So I'm going to think about my object like this here. I guess it doesn't really matter because it's symmetrical. So uh, I'm going to go up from my Create menu and I'm going to grab the Line tool. And now I just have to do some connecting of the dots here. So I'm going to connect the, come on mouse, I know you want to go there. Does your fusion do this to you? Sometimes it just won't let you go to a specific point. It's like I've drawn too much. And now you see my mouse is way over here, but if I click, it starts the point way over there. It's a weird thing. And if I just put the put the tool away with the escape key, and then grab the tool again, a lot of times it'll work. But anyway, so uh, if that problem happens to you, it happens to me too. Uh, and now I'm just going to draw my zigzag. So we've got our, our points connected here. So I'm just going to hover my mouse um, until it kind of snaps to the intersection of those lines. And I'm just going to go ahead and happily draw my zigzag all the way across to the other side and we're using kind of the inside offset lines there as our corner points. So you got to do each line individually. You got to do each line individually, yeah. So you got to click to place, Twice. yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, each line needs a beginning point and an end point. Um, 
And I believe that is because we're connecting to, we're snapping to a line segment. If I just grab my line tool, um, I can just click and place points yeah, here, right. right? But because we're using the line tool to connect one line to another, like there it just didn't let me automatically start a new line again. So um, it's kind of a, yeah. Yeah, there are a couple of things in Fusion that um, work differently depending on how you use it. Uh, so here, here's a, f maybe we'll talk about this next and later. But remind me, we're going to talk about the selection tool because there's a couple of different ways to use the selection tool. All right, so I've got my line here. <clears throat> and really this line um, is just a reference line as well. So th that line is kind of the middle of the thickness of material that we have here. So if I want to create each of the sides of the thickness of this line here, I mean, I suppose we could use the thicken tool like we were talking about earlier. Um, but that's not how I plan on doing things. So, no, we're not going to do that right now. Okay, so uh, I'm going to come up and choose that offset command again to give that, that zigzag some thickness. So if I choose this modify from the modify menu and I come down to offset, oh, hey, look at that. That's interesting. So... I'm going to need to make those lines construction lines before I do this. Um, so the offset command finds like lines that are completely connected to each other, uh, but it ignores construction lines. So before I use this offset command, I'm going to need to turn those last top and bottom lines into construction lines. So I said we, we didn't need to do that right away um, because it was getting kind of cluttered with like dotted lines, right? But, uh, but I'm going to do it now. So that top and bottom line that we offset from our rectangle, we'll make those into construction lines as well. And now if I come up to my modify menu and I come down to this offset option, now, if I hover over that zigzag, uh, the zigzag thickness in total, I believe, is 0 0.05. Yeah, it is 0 0.05. So uh, we are going to offset this by 0 0.025. So just half of the thickness, because we're going to offset it twice. Um, something that's also kind of handy is you can do math right here in in these calculations. So if I measured my line thickness and I know I'm going to offset it twice in the other direction, I can say, hey, it, the thickness is going to be 0 0.05, but because I'm doing it twice, I can say divided by 2. So you can just do some math calculations right in the dialog box here, and you can see this position shows up like that. Um, and if I double click on this measurement, it, it shows me that math again as opposed to... 0.025 divided by 2? 0 0.05 divided by 2. Or if you, you know, want to do the math in your head, the actual number is 0 0.025. So e either one will get you to the same place. Okay, and it'll only do it in one direction, it looks like. Yeah, one direction at a time. So now we're going to have to do it again. So if I come up to the modify menu and then I choose that offset option one more time, I'll choose that center zigzag again. And now when I'm offsetting, I have to do it in a negative direction. So the first time, if the first time I went point positive 0 0.025, um, this time I have to go negative 0 0.025 or negative 0 0.05 divided by 2, uh, either one will get you to the same place.
All right. So we're so close to being done with this sketch, which is exciting because uh, it's getting kind of cluttered. Um, we really just need to close off the ends of our zigzag here. And I'm going to do that by using some of these construction lines as kind of reference, let's say. So if I grab my line tool, I'm going to come up to the create menu, grab that line tool, and I'm just going to zoom in here to one side so we can see really good. I just need to close off this shape, so I'm going to click and place one point of my line there, place another point at that corner, and then I'm going to do the same thing over here. I'm going to place my end point at that corner, and then another end point at that line there. And then you can see I'm kind of enclosing this shape here. Yeah, so I'm doing a line that connects the closes off that end area there. So the two lines that I just made are kind of like on top of these lines here. And that way I've got a a fully enclosed shape that I can click on and highlight like that. Trim? You can trim. So that that's a that's a great question. Um, I don't often trim, so we've got these lines hanging out that aren't doing us anything, and in the modify menu, uh, I can choose this option called trim, and I can use that trim option to kind of cut off the other shapes. Now, when I used that trim option, um, maybe you missed it, but something something very important happened. So, when I use this trim option, you see this this is my offset value here, the number that I chose to offset this zig the center zigzag from my edge. If I use the trim tool, that offset value disappears, um, and it, it will no longer be accessible. So if I wanted to change the amount that this was offset, or if I forgot what that number was, um, I'd have to measure it some other way. Um, but And trim often does that. If you trim off parts of your sketch, um, everything is dependent on each other. So if you don't absolutely need to trim something, I would encourage you not to do that, uh, just because it, it messes up the continuity of your of your sketch in general. Yeah, that's because yeah, it's because they're no longer constrained. They're they're no longer locked in space um, because you know this line exists based on this line. And if you make this line shorter, then you're like, well, this line is no longer based on this line. So now it gets rid of this offset value and it, it uh, unconstrains everything from each other. Uh, in fact, if I were to, so right now, if I click and drag, I can't uh, move these lines around because they're, they're fully constrained in, in space and in length and everything. But if I use the trim tool, now these lines are no longer constrained by anything. So I can move these around and, and really mess up my drawing. Um, and you can see that things get uh, out of whack pretty quickly. Um, and that's all because I, I used that trim tool. So again, I, I would encourage you, if you don't absolutely need to trim something, uh, you might think about avoiding it. All right, cool. Uh, how about you guys at home? Did, do, are we, do we have a zigzag? Where, are we zigzagging? Yes, we have a zigzag. Sweet. Anybody want to show off their sweet zigzag? Sure. <laughs> Not that this is super exciting at this point, but, uh, you know, th this, this part that we're doing right now, this is like the business end. 
this is the boring part. There'll, there'll be some room for creative expression in the, in the last part of the key. Nice zigzag. Here I can pin your thing to the... Sweet. It looks exactly like my zigzag because we were literally all using the same measurements. All right, cool. Uh, golf clap. You get a golf clap for that. Good job, good job. All right. So now let's finish this sketch, which is what everybody wishes I would have said 15 minutes ago. All right, so we've got a sketch made. So that means we've got a sketch to name. Um, anything is better than sketch one. I'm gonna call. I'm gonna call it zigzag. Although, I, I hopefully I won't get sued. I'm pretty sure that name is trademarked. All right. So now we can actually extrude a thing, and I'm gonna start by extruding out that zigzag we worked so hard on. So if I come up to the create menu and I choose the extrude option, now I can choose each of the halves of my zigzag shape here, right? And uh, I can pull that arrow up and now I can enter in a number and that magical number is going to be 0.67, which is a weird number. Well, uh, I got a question. Only half of my zigzag got named zigzag. Oh. Uh, do you have two sketches? No. Just one. I'm going to come over and take a peek real quick. Yes, it's an extrude command, yeah. So, uh, an issue that we had here was um, Fusion sometimes doesn't know if, you, if you're trying to pick a line or if you're trying to pick the space in between the line. So here, when I'm kind of zoomed out, it's difficult for, I want to highlight the space in between these lines, um, but I can't because the, the lines are kind of too close together. So um, I encourage people to get, get right up on there and then I'm able to highlight the space in between these lines. So you just got to zoom in a little bit and then it's easier for Fusion to tell what you're actually trying to do. All right, cool. So now we'll come up to the Create menu. We'll choose... We are going to extrude it a distance of 0.67. Which apparently in freedom units is a round number. Let's go with sure. And then I'm going to say OK. All right, so that's OK. Um, the problem with our zigzags right now is we've got a lot of sharp corners. Um, and, and you folks might be able to see at home, but our actual um, key of a thousand truths here uh, does not have a lot of sharp corners. They're, they're fairly smooth. So in order to solve that problem, we are going to add a fillet. And a fillet is um, something that smooths out those corners into nice round bits. So if I come up here to the modify menu, and I choose this fillet option and now if I pick on both sides all of the con convex 
all of the peaks. If I just pick the peaks and none of the valleys, and I move that arrow inwards just a little bit. Now if I look at my top view, remember this, that first construction line we made? That was to give us a guide for these fillets. So that construction line is, is how big I measured fillet to fillet here. So if we just make our fillets line up nicely with those construction lines, then it should work out perfectly, in theory. I probably should have like made this last night and printed it and then stuck it in one of our paper towel dispensers <coughs> here just to make sure it worked. But it's more fun to make all of you guys do that. <laughs> um, so yeah, so we're, we've added our, we're adding our fillets we're lining them up with those construction lines there, uh, which for me is like 0 .026 inches. But uh, we just want them to. Yeah, so we picked the lines to fill it are just the the peaks, the peaks of our um, the mountain, the mountain tops, not the valleys. How do you determine what is there a word for an inside corner and a word for an outside corner? I guess inside corner and inside corner and outside corner and outside corner. Um, if you guys know at home, you can chime in here. There must be a word in English for hey, this is an outside corner, so I'm going to call it a you know, like convex or concave, right? You know, like you can tell what side of the sphere. There must be a word. I'm going to Google it later. In woodworking, we call it a cove. A cove. A cove or a... Inside, like on a molding. Okay. Inside cove. Okay, a cove, all right. All right, cool. And then we're going to do that same thing to the inside corners. Um, not for any mechanical purpose like the outside corners I think absolutely need to get filleted um, in order to fit inside of the slot. Um, the inside corners probably do not need a fillet to fit in the inside but I think it looks pretty when you do that and uh, and I'm in charge so y'all gotta do what I say. So I'm going to pick just the valleys now. And this fillet is just going to be a visual thing. I'm just going to kind of come in here and, you know, make it look um, roughly half of the amount we did before, which I guess makes sense. But because uh, it's a, a different radius, because it's inside, it's smaller. So now we get a nice looking zigzag there and I'm going to click OK. Now what was the, the, fillet radius? the fillet radius for the outside for me was uh, point zero. Uh, let's double check. Uh, well, that was the height. So point zero two six was that the fillet radius for my peaks of my zigzag. Yeah, and then the valleys, the fillet radius was 0 0.014. So about half of, of what it was on the outside. And you know, like, uh, we can do math here. So if I wanted to make it exactly half, I could do that 0 0.026 divided by 2. All right, so the next thing we're going to make here is going to be the uh, part of the key that you hold on to and that you attach to your key ring or, um, in our case, to a string that's <coughs> hanging next to the paper towel dispenser. Um, and in order to do that, I just need to extrude out the, the sketch that we've made the first time in the other direction. So 
I'm spinning around so I'm looking at the bottom of my sketch here and I'm gonna just go up to my create menu and find that find our favorite command the extrude command and then I'm gonna oh you know what we were gonna talk about selections so here's a case where I, I have to I have to select more than one thing so because my sketch is divided up into a hundred different ways here um, there are two ways that you can use the this selection tool so if I have nothing selected if I drag from top right to to bottom left and I'll point it out uh, I've got the window selection tool and this gives you the tip that, that I'm gonna give you right now so this window selection tool there are two ways you can use it if I drag from top right to bottom left um, I get an orange window here with a solid blue line and if I let go um, I got nothing highlighted there so the way that that orange selection tool works is it will only select things that are fully encapsulated with inside of that shape uh, inside of this rectangle and because there's nothing that's fully encapsulated in there then I don't get any selection however if I use that selection tool from top left to bottom right then I get my yellow box and I get a dashed line and now this will select anything that it touches so there it will it will select everything so it's kind of handy in this in this occasion because like I just want to select both of these selections here so I can use the selection tool that only selects things that are fully enclosed within it and because my zigzag those two zigzag shapes are fully enclosed but nothing else is I'm only selecting those two zigzag shapes there um, somehow I put my extrude tool away so this works with the extrude tool already grabbed too. So, oh boy, what happened there? That's interesting. What are you grabbing? You're grabbing that face. Well, at any rate, that's how you use that selection tool. Comes in handy if you gotta uh, select, you know, 50 or 60 things. Uh, like you're extruding out some holes, a hole pattern. Um, so that selection tool comes in real handy. But here we want to extr extrude everything. So we're extruding this whole box. We're extruding it downwards. Now this is where some subjective uh, creative freedom comes in handy or comes in to play. Um, my key that I'm measuring here is... drum roll it is 1.2 inches um, for me that's a negative number negative 1.2 negative 1.2 however this is your key now so you can make it whatever size you want to I will not stop you uh, if you want to make a six inch long handle on your on your key I support your choices uh, if after class you wanna make the rest of your key look like a lightsaber uh, I, I support your choices so alright but I'm gonna copy this one because I'm boring and I'm gonna leave it as join which is my default option here so I'm gonna be joining this body to my zigzag and I'll say okay All right, so now let's give it some character. So right now our, our zigzag is kind of boring. It's just a big block. Um, but I'd like to add some character to the front. Also, I think it needs a keyhole. So it needs a, needs a hole to hang on a string or, or whatever you're going to hang it on, right? I'm going to turn off my zigzag sketch just because I'm done with it and I don't need to see it anymore. I have a, uh, I have a problem. Yeah. I extruded it 
extruded gap from the zigzag. So uh, if you ever want to change your extrude here, let me go back and have the same problem that you did. Uh, so you don't have, yours looks like this, right? Yeah. Right. So down here in our timeline, this is our like kind of timeline of events of things that have happened okay. to get us to where we're at right now. Right. If you ever want to change something about an extrude or, or a fillet, um, you can right click on the items that are down there in your timeline. And now I can say edit feature. And now I get my extrude or my edit or my edit feature window here. And, and in this case, it's the uh, all the items that are in the extrude dialog box. And I just need to zoom in now and add to the profiles selected that little zigzag. So we just missed clicking on that. And now, now you should have a nice solid shape, in theory. That uh, edit works for anything down here. So uh, that this fillet that I did right here, I can right click on it and I can say edit feature. Uh, this is the fillet. Now you can see I've gone back in time. So because I'm back in time, uh, the, I've got some items that are grayed out down in my timeline um, because I haven't done those yet. This is like I mentioned last week. It's Marty McFly's hand all ghosted out. Um, it might be there in the future, but uh, because you went back in time and sh shot young Biff, then uh, you don't have that hand yet. All right, so you could, like I said, you can change those fillets. Uh, you can go back and change anything. And then when you say OK, and go back to 1985, uh, which is the present, then everything is fine with some minor changes because now you got a sweet truck. All right. So uh, we're adding some character. Um, in the last 10 minutes here, I just want to add a little bit of character to the face here. So I'm going to come up to the Create menu. And I'm going to choose to create a sketch. And I'm going to create that sketch on this face here. So um, in addition to creating sketches on those three drawing surfaces that Fusion gives you initially, I can create a sketch on any flat surface. So if I choose to create my sketch on that flat surface there, Something I can do is, is use that offset tool that we've used a couple of times. So in the modify menu, if I come down to this offset option. Now I haven't really made any lines yet to offset. However, when you create a sketch on a surface, it kind of gives you the geometry of the surface that's underneath it, I suppose you could say for free. So I don't have to draw any lines to uh, be able to reference the geometry of the surface that I created this sketch on, if that makes sense. So I can uh, give this a little border of uh, maybe the same thickness as my thickness of my ribs makes sense, which is 0 0.05. And I can say OK. And now I can finish this sketch if I want to. Actually, let's not finish this sketch. Let's add our little circle. So we need a little circle for a key ring. So I'm going to go ahead and from the Create menu, I'll go ahead and grab the Circle option. I'm going to choose the Center Diameter Circle. And I'm going to place it over here in the corner. Um, this is probably very subjective. This is 0.19, so I'm just going to go with 0.2. You just got to be able to get a key ring in there. And just somewhere in that bottom corner is fine for me, and I'm going to go ahead and say finish sketch. 
And now I can extrude out and, and kind of subtract away some of this stuff here. So uh, from the Create menu, I'm going to go ahead and choose the Extrude option. And I'm just going to extrude that little, that rectangle that I made inside of my block, let's call it. Uh, I'll go in 0 0.01, I'm sure that'll be fine. And the operation here, because I'm extruding into a shape, uh, if I were to extrude out of this shape, the default operation would default to join here. But because I'm extruding into this shape, it defaults to cut. So that's going to subtract away some space there. Now, the last thing I'll show you in this class here is if I wanted to, uh, I'll tell you what, I'm going to extrude out the little hole. I'll do that the same way. So in the, I'll grab my extrude tool, take that little hole, extrude that through there, and then I'll say okay. So now the last thing I'm going to do here is I've got um, I've got a nice looking or a decent looking shape on this side. However, the back side is still flat, and I'd really like to just create this feature on the back side. Um, but I don't want to have to draw it again because I'm lazy. So there is an option um, called mirror. So if I, from the Create menu, go ahead and grab this Mirror command, one of the things that it will let me mirror, one of the types of things that it will let me mirror, is a feature. So I can choose this, choose to mirror a feature, and a feature is anything down here in the bottom of my timeline. So anything that appears down here, I think I can mirror a sketch, but uh, I've never actually done that before. Uh, I'm, if I mirror, not the last extrude I did, the last extrude I did was the hole. The penultimate extrude that I did, or the second to last, was that extrude where I gave it that little recess there. And then if, as the mirroring plane, because we drew this as a center rectangle, that uh, plane that there is a plane that bisects this piece right in half. Uh, for me, it's the plane in between my Z and my X axis. And you can see it kind of ghosted out on the other side here. But if I say OK, now it uh, goes ahead and, and gives that little, gives it some character there. So there's our key. Um, for a bonus, we've got five minutes left, and and <laughs> Mike would be very upset with me if I if I chose to. Mike picked this thing, and whenever we get to the end of class, I'm like, all right, now we're gonna do something in five minutes that normally I would take twenty minutes to do, um, and I'm not gonna do that right now. In Mike's honor, because he picked this thing, I'm not gonna do it um, because I, I appreciate Mike. And, uh, and I'm not going to do it. What I was going to say, or what I will leave as a challenge, let's say, is uh, we, we inserted a canvas last time in class here. You can also insert uh, other drawings, let's say. So uh, SVG files are things that you can find on the internet. Um, and an SVG file is like a vector drawing and um, you can insert it in here. So like you can find the Milwaukee Makerspace logo as an SVG and you can insert it and you can extrude it. Uh, I'm gonna do that after class. I'm gonna put the Milwaukee Makerspace logo on both sides of this little thing here. Um, but I will just leave that as a challenge for you guys to, to see if you can figure out um, and, and not try to cram 
20 minutes worth of drawing into five minutes. Any questions at home? How'd you guys do? Do you have, do you have a key? I successfully have a key. Sweet. Now you can uh, go to public restrooms and uh, haunt them <laughs> by like opening up the paper towel dispensers and then walking away and just leaving them open. Okay. <laughs> SVG. Yeah. And there are also um, SVG converters. So if you find just an image, you can you can Google. Uh, I think I googled. Uh, what did I Google? I googled image to SVG. And and this is the first thing that popped up. Um, you can just upload a picture and it will make an SVG for you. So, and then, you know, like for example, this brick pattern is something that you could extrude out and give some depth, uh, some texture, say, to, to one of these faces. So, hmm. make your key your own. Uh, this is your key. There are many other keys like it, but this one is yours. What do you do then? Just export that to like an STL file? Yeah. And so now if you were to actually want to print this, I'm going to name this. I'll just call it key for now. Um, there's a couple of ways that we can actually make this, right? So uh, if I right click on the body in the bodies folder and say save as mesh, then uh, I can choose the kind of mesh that I want to make. Uh, STL or a, a 3MF, depending on the slicing software you're using. I think all the Prusa slicers will accept both of these. Um, I usually choose uh, 3MF because it's a newer format, but <coughs> STLs work just fine as well. And then you say OK, and now you can put it wherever you're going to save it on your desktop. Um, the other way to do it is uh, this is an unsaved file. Let's save it. Uh, towel key. So this is the main document component. I can also click on this main document component and uh, I thought save as mesh was an option there. Do I have to choose export? I can export it as a step file. Okay, nope, there's, there's just one way to do it now. you got to click on the body in the bodies folder, right click on it, and say save as mesh. Yeah, and then you get, um, well, look, did I actually do it? Then you get, here we go, paper towel key. If I double click on that, uh, go away and now the scale because because I draw everything in freedom units um, I have to scale it up by 2540 but uh, and cheat two box is kind of terrible here's the one I did before class oh. I just have to take my word for it that it's got the logo on the other side I'll spin it around. There we go. There's the Milwaukee Makerspace logo embossed on the front there. And there we go. So uh, next week we'll get back into the project that we kind of started last week and we'll keep uh, drawing a plane because uh, we're going to try to participate in that Red Bull flu talk thing here in Milwaukee this summer. So I'm drawing a model plane, and I'm going to terrorize you all by bringing you along on the ride. So we'll see you next week. Uh, thanks for joining me at home. Thanks for joining me here. We'll see you guys next week. Thank you.